You know what it's time for. Time for our Friday nightcap, and it is a great one. Alex Witt is here, host of Alex Witt Reports, right here on MSNBC. The Reverend Al Sharpton, National Action Network president and host of MSNBC's Politics Nation. David Gura, business correspondent for NPR, and veterans advocate Paul Rykoff, president of Righteous Media and host of the Independent Americans podcast. You know what we're starting with. We're starting with the biggest story of the week, obviously, Dominion Voting Systems versus Fox News. Private text messages and emails revealed that executives and stars of the network were saying one thing between one another and an entirely other thing on television, lying over and over and over. So I just want to start with this. What do you make of this story? Who's surprised? Right. <laughs> this is who they are. If they tell you who they are, you should believe it. And they've been this for years. So I don't know who's surprised by this. It's like, you know, being surprised when Putin does something nasty. I mean, this is who they are. This is what they've done. This is what they've done to our country. This is what they've done to brainwash and propagandize people for years. This is just deeper under the hood. But is that the case? I mean, Reverend Al, there was a time when you used to pretty regularly go on Fox News is this who they always were? I think that this is who they always were to the degree that they were right wing and they would put their thumb on the scale on issues. I think they went over the top with Trump. I mean, they just went crazy with Trump and he just drove them, drove them, drove them. And I think that not only have they put themselves in a very precarious position uh, in terms of the Dominion lawsuit. I think there's, there, I know some lawyers looking at whether they may have FCC uh, licensing questions to knowingly go on television and say something you know better than. Somebody could challenge that in terms of uh, their FCC licensing. I'm talking about Murdoch, mm. because you're not now saying something that you believe that ends up wrong. You're saying, I don't believe this crap, but I'm going to say it tonight. Prime time. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? There's one thing to say that, that a media outlet is right leaning or left leaning, but there's a difference between leaning and lying. Right. And you saw in those text messages between Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson, this isn't what our audience came here for, directly related to accurately calling the Arizona election. So isn't there a rub there that they're, they're that, that straight up lying? You're in a different territory here. It's been amazing to see all this come out through discovery in respect to what Paul's saying. A lot of it's expected, but it is astonishing just to see so many of these comments and to see how often that they were communicating with people on the business side of, of the organization, including with Rupert Murdoch and... I will say, of course, in my career, I've been grateful not to have many dealings with those who are running the companies that I'm doing journalism for. It seems like, like the opposite there. But it is extraordinary. It was extraordinary to hear Lachlan Murdoch, the son of Rupert Murdoch, this week saying, you know, wholeheartedly with they're doing news with no fear or favor, uh, taking a page out of what uh, a former publisher of The New York Times said, holding that organization the same breath as that you'd hold The New York Times I don't know if they believe this. I think they believe that they're in a world of trouble, though, as a result of, of yeah. what we've oh, seen yeah. here all these yeah. parents. Every lawyer with whom I've spoken on my broadcast says they're in a world of trouble, most likely. My thing is, we listened to Rupert Murdoch, and he, he said it flat out. It's not red or blue. It's green. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he said it flat out. What it's all about is all about money. So my question is, how does this get relayed to Fox viewers? Do any Fox viewers now say... They're not talking about it no. on air, on air. Well, of course yeah. they're not talking about it. But those Fox viewers who may be outside of the bubble of Fox News or those that watch us or CNN or anybody else who's covering it, you've got to wonder if they're thinking, hang on a minute. Have I been lied to all but this that's time? The thing. I could love watching Reverend Al, but if I know he's lying to me, I'm not going to be happy with that. How come that those viewers don't seem to mind? I think that their viewers, I think the independent voters are going to be impacted by it. I right. think that the right. far right voters... They'll go down with the, uh, you know, Trump said, I can shoot somebody on Fifth mm -hmm. Avenue and they'll still vote for me. Some of them will go down with the ship, but I think they hurt themselves with independent voters. But I think that we also must deal with the arrogance of their actually texting each other. <laughs> I mean, I know guys that's in back before uh, marijuana became legal that would sell weed in Harlem that didn't text each other. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just think about it. You're putting this in writing shows that you think you're above the law, that there's no accountability for you. And that was what was striking to me. I mean, these guys really wrote this. OK, but here's yeah. the thing. They're not changing their behavior. You would, I would think if I was Tucker Carlson this week, I'd tighten my game up. 
I wouldn't necessarily change direction, but I'd certainly tame it, tamper it down. And what did he do? We saw his, his four minutes of his 44,000 hours of, of surveillance video from January 6th. He continued to go, he went after Capitol Police officers. Right. So it's not like, when you talk about his hubris, it's still alive and kicking. Oh, yeah. I mean, Brian Sicknick's family, that, that's just cruel and unusual punishment. I don't know how he sleeps at night doing that, honestly. We on, a really, on a really expensive mattress. He's going yeah. <laughs> to yeah. 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 double down. It works for him. It works for his audience. You're not even going to penetrate his audience to communicate to them what's going on. Maybe the only group celebrating here is Newsmax, because maybe they want to take a part of that audience away. But this is going to be who he is. He's going to triple down on a double down. And it's the culture that's permeated all of the right wing since Trump took office. There is no accountability. They can do it out in the open. And they can endanger our national security and cross every moral line without any repercussions. So the real question is, will there be repercussions? Who will hold them accountable? If there's not, why would they stop? All the things that you just laid out, Trump's a free man. Yep. His daughter and son-in-law who worked in the White House are richer than ever. And in terms of this all being about green, last I checked, Fox didn't lose any viewers this week. Yeah, right. They're not losing viewers. So the question will be, what do they do to try to stem whatever hemorrhaging is going on right now, right? Do you think this is actually going to go to trial? Personally, I don't. I think they're going to have to settle. They're going to have to put some sort of a lid on this PR nightmare, um, NDAs and the like. But, but it's already out there. There's proof all we have to do is replay the texts and replay what they've said and then show what they said amongst themselves time and time and time again. Our problem is here at MSNBC, we have better stuff to do. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. We have better stories to share with the people out there. But that's like them choosing to relitigate January 6th. No reason to relitigate it and push conspiracy theories forward. Everybody knows the truth. All right, I want to talk about a new topic. It very much aligns with what we're already covering. I just want everyone to listen to this. It is a sample of what we recently heard from conservatives and right-wing media about their favorite subject. This current federal government is now controlled by a group of woke idiots. The Biden administration seems more interested in woke fantasies than the hard reality Americans face every day. We will demolish woke tyranny. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. Wokeness is not just a political ideology. It's not just something annoying that emerged on college campuses that we can ignore. It's a state religion. Wokeness is a virus more dangerous than any pandemic hands down. Remember, wokeism isn't just an attack on reason. It's an attack on fun. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. What does one do anything. with this, right? A war on wokeness, the, the woke mob. The most recent mob in this country was on January 6th. People storming our Capitol, threatening to violently attack members of Congress. But this is what we watch every night, and this has Americans fired up. It's a remarkable catch-all phrase that I don't think anybody would define in the same way, and I think that's why they're exploiting it? it so yeah. effectively. And I think if you were to ask any of those people we just saw what it means, you'd get a different answer from Well, from here's the thing. They, they use it as a pejorative, right? If you've got Ron DeSantis calling you woke, that is bad news bears. You don't want that. because He's coming after you, although if he did that to me, I'd go, thank you. But having said that, I think the word woke, as evidenced by a poll that we saw this week, what it really means, it's a modern sort of way to describe people who are educated on, they're aware of social media, they're aware of social issues, they've kind of studied it. And I think that's what being woke truly is. I mean, you're, you're aware of the interaction and what different groups in our society have had to go through. I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad word. It just depends who's calling you that. that. That's your definition. If you ask Americans, you're going to be pretty evenly divided on, on what it means. Well, you I ask think the poll was evenly divided. Yeah, yeah. You have a I point. Mean, yeah, that's the was. MSNBC version right. of what woke yeah. is. The, the Fox News version is much more aggressive, but, much but, more but pejorative. Different Americans have different views. Absolutely. Woke. Yeah. And what I always say to people when they start talking about woke, well, what's the opposite? Sleep? You rather be. <laughs> right. I, I yeah. mean, yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and I think you change the argument. Do you want to be woke or do you want to be sleep? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then you have to define what sleep means and what woke means. And you can't let them define it. Whoever defines yeah. you, confines you, Jesse Jackson used to right. say. Okay, and, but, what, I like but what it is, is, is a, the new wedge issue. It's the wedge issue of 2023. It's effective for them. It's effective for the left. And independents are often in the middle here. But okay. if you look at the polling, it's split right along yeah. partisan but lines. But it's effective, right along by partisan. just like it was Republic effective for Republicans to talk about defund the police. Yes. Because they Absolutely. redefined Absolutely. what it meant. Right. And that's and why they 
they leaned into it. So is it the new defund the police? Ever. It is. <laughs> I mean, honestly. And, and defund the police worked, worked with a lot of elections around the country because we did not come out and define what they that meant. for Republicans. Or to yeah. say yeah. that that yeah. is not our slogan. Because I kept telling a lot of my friends that uh, work with me in a lot of the police reform thing, we should use the slogan, define the police, not defund You're the police. Yeah. But you, need, you, need to, you need to control the words. I mean, I'm a yeah, preacher. You've got to control the words. Yeah. Call, 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 bad call, call with Democrats, that. communist doesn't work anymore. Liberals doesn't work anymore. Right. Woke probably tests much higher than all of that. So they're going to continue to use it. And if you talk to independents, they're kind of on the fence. Republicans, it gets them animated. They feel under attack. And, and this is going to continue to be, I think, the lead element for most every campaign in the country if you're on the right side of it. What should Democrats do about it? Because in large part, the White House is like, we're not going to go down these woke conspiracy theory well, they're, rabbit they're, holes. They're not, they're not rooted in truth. But if you don't touch it, you're letting Republicans run the table. David? No, I, I, I think that that's true. That's to what you're saying. That's the tension there. How, how much do you leave it in this vacuum versus try to get embrace it as something that you want to get behind to define it in the way that you're describing, which is to not have it as a pejorative term, but one mm -hmm. that means this and that and things mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. get behind. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. I think that there, there's a long wait here to find out what Democrats are going right. to do. Yeah. There's woke and there's asleep. And Reverend Al is saying, <laughs> Democrats, you better redefine this and wake up. I think that's what he just told you.